Hello everybody, Lord of Life here, bringing as a brand new deck profile, and today we got Melodious. This is... Oh god, I hate what Konami did to this deck. <laughs> this deck was looking to be pretty good for a long time, and then, uh, due to the events of the anime, uh, got completely and totally forgotten about by Konami, and got no new support for, like, ever. And then... Out of nowhere, we get the freaking Link and a new fusion spell and stuff for the archetype. So, this deck <laughs> finally got support here in the TCG after, like, God, what feels like a decade. I know it wasn't, but it might as well have been. And it's not half bad. It's a pretty fun rogue stun deck. Now, do I think this is going to, like, take any tournaments or anything? Probably not. I really doubt it. But it's still a pretty decent, fun little rogue deck if you want to give something a try. And, uh, yeah. So, anyways, let's get on to the deck profile. First and foremost, we got three of Arya the Melodious Diva. She is a level 4, 1600, 1200. And while this special win card is on the field, your opponent cannot target any Melodious you control for card effects or destroy them in battle. Also, you can't target them with card effects either. Because <laughs> that is something that is a part of this, and it really does suck. So, Arya is a really good card overall. She, along with uh, one of your other monsters, Elegy, is your main kind of sort of wing condition of the deck in that they form a really obnoxious lock that is really hard to get rid of and basically requires a kaiju or something similar to be able to get around and you kind of just sit on the lock until you can go and swing for big damage with uh, stuff or poke for little damage here and there. So that is something to keep in mind. Next up we got... Three of uh, Solo, the Melodious Songstress. Uh, Solo is a pretty good card overall. She's basically a Cyber Dragon. If you control all monsters, you can spell summon her uh, from your hand. And then if she's destroyed by battle, uh, or I believe card effect, or is it just by battle? Uh, nope, just by battle. Uh, you can spell summon any Melodious from your deck. Now, because it specifically requires battle, she's kind of bad in tandem with Arya. But she helps get your deck rolling because while she's on the field with Arya, she can't be destroyed in battle because of Arya, and so that does prevent her effect from triggering. But, however, uh, she's really good for getting the deck going, especially with some of the other uh, support cards and cards I use in this deck in general, just to be able to spell summon as many monsters as I can. Because that's the whole point of this deck, is to be able to spell summon as many of your monsters as easily as possible. Next up, we got Soprano, the, oh dear lord, Melodious Songstress. Couldn't really read it. So, Soprano, she's a 1400, uh, 1400, level 4 light fairy. And then her effect is a huge wall of text that says, If this card is spell summon, you can target one melodious monster in graveyard except a copy of herself. Add it to your hand. You can only use this effect of Songstress once per turn. Once per turn, you can fusion summon one melodious fusion monster from your extract using monsters you control as fusion material, including this card. So, she lets you fusion summon for your melodious fusions, and also she recurs uh, one of your melodiouses from your graveyard pretty easily. Again, she's another really good card overall for the archetype. Kind of sucks that she only lets you fusion summon using monsters you control, but however, the fusion summon is really nice because this deck doesn't have a huge amount of ways to build a fusion summon, but it is something that's integral to the archetype's playstyle. Next up, I got two uh, Tam Tam to Melodious Diva. Uh, Tam Tam has two pretty decent effects. If it's special in the while you control a Melodious Monster, you can add a Polymerization from your deck or graveyard to your hand. And if it's, and if it's sent to the graveyard as fusion material for a fusion summon, you can target a Melodious you control. It loses 500 attack, and if it does, inflict 500 damage to your opponent. Now, you might be wondering, why would you want to do that? Well, there's a really good reason. One of the fusion monsters uh, takes advantage of having lower attack stats so tam tam is nice for that and also you get some burn damage on your opponent which can be useful in time and all that the big thing though is that when she special summoned away control and other melodious you get to search out poly or recur it from your graveyard which is really good for this deck overall and what it wants to do and all that and then next up I got two uh, Sonata, the Melodious Diva. If you control Melodious you can spell summon her from your hand and while you control the spell summon card all oh sorry I got three in here what the heck that is weird okay normally I have three then the twos and then all that but okay so I have three <laughs> uh, Sonata Sonata basically uh, she's a free special summon who also boosts all of your melodiouses by 500 while she's on the field uh, pretty nice for trying to push for more damage but she's mainly just link fodder uh, if I'm being completely honest Next up, I got two LG the Melodious Diva. This is the card that, com that combos with uh, good old Arya. 
basically while she's on the field. Uh, if she's special summoned fairies, I believe you control. If it's, uh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, special summoned my loadiest monsters you control cannot be destroyed by card effects. And then if this card is spell summoned, all fairy type monsters you control gain 300 attack. So, again, boosting up more attack power and also protecting your melodious monsters. Next up, we got Scored, Melodious Diva. Basically, she's a hand trap that drops your opponent's uh, monsters to zero whenever they battle and everything. And I think, uh, I thought she had a recurring effect, but nope, it just changes your opponent's monsters to zero, which is pretty decent um, overall. It also changes the de uh, defense as well. Uh, two effect veiler for negation, same thing with Ghost Ogre. Kind of goes hand in hand with this deck being kind of just a slow burn. Then I got one, uh, Jesus Christ, Mozarda, the Melodious Maestra. Uh, once per turn, you can spell summon a fairy from your hand. Uh, I mean, that's basically it. It has a restriction on letting you only use light monsters, but oh well. Um, yeah, that's that's not too great, but it does go hand in hand with what the deck wants to do. And so does uh, Shofina, the Melodious Maestra, who once per turn lets you add a Melodious from your graveyard to your hand, but also prevents you from being able to use any effect of a light monster. Well, except for a light monster from your uh, light after you add that. So there's that. And it's actually any light fairy, so <laughs> uh, Christia is a viable option for this archetype if you want to. Personally, it kind of hinders your own uh, play style, so I'm not too big on it, but I digress. So the only reason why you play these two, because they are really bad draws if you do draw them for the most part, is that one of the uh, fusion monsters of the archetype needs these, okay? There are no other me me melodious maestras other than these two. Uh, and if there was one, actually I think there's a monster that pretends to be one, but it's garbage. So they, you need these two. Not to mention they have pretty decent effects, and they are easy to special summon thanks to other uh, effects in the deck. But however, they are really garbage drawing into, so you got that you gotta minimize it as much as possible. Uh, Sofino actually like allows for a lot of just dirty plays. Like you can add back effect failure. It's <laughs> I love it. Uh, Moving on, we got three, Ties of the Brethren. Ties of the Brethren is one of the like best cards in this deck if you can draw it. <laughs> because ideally you're going to want to normal summon one of your uh, Melodious monsters, activate Ties of the Brethren, summon out two more uh, of your level 4 Melodiouses. There's plenty of them. Uh, ideally you'll want to summon Arya and Tam Tam. Arya will protect your uh, Melodious monsters and Tam Tam will immediately get you to polymerization. Sure, your turn basically ends there, but oh well. Uh, you got your uh, Arya on the field, and ideally you'll be able to uh, get LG out next. And typically speaking, Arya by herself is pretty good for at least a turn or two, but you're going to have to be careful because your opponent can get rid of her pretty easy, so uh, it's something to keep in mind of. But however, this does effectively allow you to get out uh, just so much, so much advantage with what it wants to do. Speaking of polymerization, I do play three of it. This deck does have an archetypal fusion spell, but it doesn't have like fusion in a name or anything, and there's no way to search it, so I feel like I kind of have to play poly in order to actually be able to have this deck function. It's also pretty nice because if you do happen to draw into the Maestra, you got to be able to fuse off of them, so that's something to keep in mind. Then we got the fusion spell for the archetype Ostinato. <laughs> this card. So, fusion, if you control no monsters, that's another big issue why I do play polymerization, but Ostinato, you can't search. Um, if you can turn all monsters, fusion summon one Melodious fusion monster from your air deck using two monsters from your hand and or deck as fusion material. During the end phase of this turn, destroy that monster that was fusion summoned by this effect. And if you do, if all the fusion materials were used for its fusion summon are in the graveyard, you can spell summon all of them. So this card effectively cheeses out one of your fusion monsters, destroys it, and then lets you spell summon the fusion materials from your graveyard. Pretty good card overall. It does have a few annoying restrictions, like only being able to uh, be activated if you control all monsters. It's it's not particularly great. Also, there's times where you really don't want your fusion monster to get killed, so that sucks as well. But also, I mean, it's just an overall really good card. I just wish this deck had more ways of summoning out the monsters in a graveyard. Uh, I've been kind of tempted to try out Call to Haunted and stuff, but at the same time, I feel like it's kind of slow. I do actually play one way of getting your monster. Well, actually, two ways. Uh, monster Reborn, of course, but 
And there's a few ways to get your monsters back from your graveyard that you summon off of this. Next up, I got two Photon Lead, and this is where a lot of you go, what the hell is this? <laughs> it lets you spell summon a level four, light level 4 or lower light monster from your hand, and it's a quick play spell. So it's pretty good for what you want to do with this deck, in that it gets Arya on the field special summoned. That's what it does. And it can also, of course, summon Tam Tam, uh, the other ones, I forgot her name, the other Melodious Songstress, the one that adds a dude from the graveyard back to your hand. It's just an overall really good card for what the deck wants to be able to do. So it, it's kind of necessary, even if it is a technical neg one, <laughs> until this deck gets something better, which it probably won't. <laughs> you kind of need it. Uh, speaking of, we got first movement solo. This was actually the first support card back in the day. If you control no monsters, <laughs> Special summon one Melodious from your deck. <laughs> uh, so that's pretty good. Um, except, sorry, it has to be a level 4 lower Melodious monster from your hand or deck. You can activate one copy of this card per turn, and you cannot summon anything except for Melodious monsters for the rest of the turn. Yeah, this card isn't particularly great, and it conflicts with Ostinato, but there are times where you need it. And again, like with the other Melodious support cards, there's no way to search it. This deck has no form of searching or draw power whatsoever, so you kind of need to kind of play at least a couple copies, and it does get you to Aria, uh, and doesn't completely lock you out of doing more special summons, but it's still... You know. <laughs> uh, then we got one for Tissimo. I've been kind of, I'm honestly probably going to drop this card. I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of it. It boosts all your uh, Melodious sponsors by a decent amount, but you can also send it to the graveyard to Fusion Summon. I just figured it was another easy way to Fusion Summon, but however, it's really not necessary. I'm playing three Poly and three Adi Ostinato. It's just, I wanted to try and test it out because. It's it's okay. The attack buff is nice, and it's another fusion thing. And this deck is all about its fusion summons, and you know you're not gonna have your poly or your uh, Osinato all the time, so it's okay. Uh, but really, honestly, you can probably cut it out for something else. Uh, one monster reborn, one regeki. And then finally for the traps, uh, two back to the front because it's basically called a haunted but doesn't get negated if it gets destroyed. So there's that. So yeah, <laughs> uh, kind of necessary for what this deck uh, and how it functions and everything. Getting to bring back your fusions is just wonderful overall because your fusions don't really, this deck other than like outside stuff doesn't have any way of really being able to spell someone from a graveyard. Moving on, we got their Link Monster. This card, this card I have been waiting for forever. Needs two fairy monsters to go into. If this card is Link Summon, you can discard one card. For the rest of this turn, you cannot spell summon anything except for Melodious Monsters. And, spell summon two Melodious Monsters from your deck with different, uh, I believe, levels. Uh, yeah, with different levels from your deck to, your, to the zones this card points to. <laughs> I can I can end it right there. You get Aria and LG from your deck for essentially free. <laughs> uh, this card is insane. It's got garbage attack power, but it's so so good with what the deck, uh, how it functions and everything. Um, it also has some other stuff. You cannot summon anything into a melodious yada yada. You can only use the effect of Bloom Harmonist, a melodious composer, once per turn. Uh, by the way, beautiful card art. I love the look of this card. It is pretty as heck. Um, and then it does have another effect where if a melodious monster this card points to uh, attacks, your opponent cannot activate cards or effects until the end of the damage step. That's not big, big helpful, but it is nice. It's just an extra form of just protection for your melodious monster so they can try and get some damage in. And considering one of the fusions, you kind of need to get that damage in. The big thing I hate with this card is that it's easy to just kind of ping you for damage because it's got a thousand attack and there's nothing better to like link up into it. <laughs> uh, at least not on the turn that you summon it, uh, which does suck. Uh, but however, I can't deny that getting to just summon your Arya and Elegy and get the lock going right then is important and imperative for this deck and this card just absolutely breaks it. And then you can link off of her into another copy of her using another monster to summon more monsters and just be able to just go off even more because then you can summon Tam Tam and Sonata and then go off even more off of that or you can summon Mozarda and Chopina and begin recurring and summoning even more. It's so 
so, 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 so good for this deck. I just wish it didn't mock you into only Melodious monsters. Otherwise, I guess we'd have to worry about, like, some Melodious FTK or something. I have no idea. Anyway, so on to the rest of the fusions. We got, uh, Jesus, how do you spell this? I mean, pronounce it Schuberta, the Melodious Maestra. And it's another Maestra, but it's a fusion, so... Uh, I mean, you can use it for other stuff. Um, needs two Melodious Monsters to go into. Once while it's on the field, as a quick effect, you can target up to three cards in the other player's graveyards. Banish them. This card gains, uh, I believe, 200 attack. Uh, yeah, 200 attack for each card banished. It's basically a quick effect DD Crow that can get rid of three cards. It's graveyard control and is super generic, needing only two Melodiouses to make. Uh, it's kind of necessary to play. Uh, next up, we got two Bloom Prima, the Melodious choir uh, this card is one of your big damage dealers uh, she needs one melodious uh, sorry hard to read one melodious maestro plus one or more melodious monsters to go into uh, this card gains 300 attack for each fusion material used for its fusion summon this card can make two attacks during each battle phase if this fusion summon card is sent to the graveyard you can target one melodious monster in graveyard add it to your hand uh, it's a pretty good card overall it's one of your big damage dealers uh, ideally you're going to want to go for like two maybe three just to be able to get it to some decent attack but thanks to fortissimo and elegy and uh, sonata she's going to be able to get to some pretty decent attack already along with her own effect so that's pretty nice and then also of course she's a double attacker and with score you can do a crap ton of damage with her so that is pretty good overall if she does die she does recur i just wish she would special summon the melodious monster instead of adding it to your hand but oh well and then we got the boss monster the like one of my personal favorite fusions in terms of looks aesthetic and effect we got Bloom Diva the Melodious Choir. This is a level 6, 1000 attack, 2k defense, needs a Melodious Maestro with another monster to go into. And then this thing is just mean. This card, <clears throat> you take no battle damage from battles involving it. This card cannot be destroyed by battle uh, or card effects. <laughs> and if this card battles a specimen monster, after damage calculation, you can inflict damage to your opponent equal to the difference between the original attack of that opponent's monster and this card. And if you do, destroy that opponent's monster. So, we have a monster that has garbage stats, technically, but cannot be destroyed by battle or card effects. And also, you take no battle damage from battles involving it, and it basically forces your opponent to take the damage instead and destroys it. This thing is a better you bell. Like, it's just straight up a better you bell <laughs> overall. And it's just such an incredibly good monster. You don't need three of it because you really just don't, so I don't play three of her. Uh, you rarely go through more than two or even more than one because she's just that good. Uh, she is your main win condition because who doesn't special summon? And you're going to be ramming her into that and doing so so much damage. This is also where Tam Tam's effect comes in, where if you fusion summon off Tam Tam, uh, you like if you fusion summon into uh, Bloom Diva by using Tam Tam. Oh, hey, she drops uh, Bloom Diva's attack to 500 instead of a thousand, deals even more damage to your opponent with the burn, and then also makes it to where your opponent's going to take even more damage with Bloom Diva's effect. It's an overall really just amazing fantastic card for this archetype and is going to be the bane of people's existence whenever you play this deck. It's fantastic. Now everything beyond this point is completely down to you uh, and whatever the meta happens to be whenever you're watching this. <clears throat> First and foremost I'm playing One Nightmare Cerberus. This deck doesn't have a lot of ways to pop back row uh, or monsters uh, I should say. It doesn't have a lot of ways to pa uh, pop monsters or back row so the nightmare package is kind of helpful. Uh, one Nightmare Unicorn, uh, One Star Yuja, it doesn't, get ha it doesn't happen often, but it is pretty nice, uh, because then you can draw four, special summon more monsters and everything. Uh, you generally don't want to summon him in the extra monster zone, because then um, the uh, Link Monster, Bloom Harmony, uh, Bloom Harmonist, it, is, it gets completely locked off, so that's not good. But however, this card is pretty good for the archetype as well. I'm playing one Boral Load. Uh, if I had the money for a Apollosa, I would play her instead. Again, this, de this deck does not have like any negation, so Apollosa would be wonderful. But I also don't have money to go chugging out for Apollosa. So uh, if you have Apollosa, go ahead and play her instead. But however, Boral Load, Boral Sword, 
Sword or any of the other Borals will pretty much make up for it decently. Um, I play one Abyss Dweller to just stop opponent's graveyard effects, and then one uh, Digest Arm Roll to kind of just recur my stuff. So that is it for Melodious. I really do truthfully love this deck. I hate how Konami just gave it and also the uh, character who played it. Um, just uh, they, they completely dropped the ball with it, but oh well. So what do you guys think? Thank you all for watching. Have a good day. It's your birthday. Happy birthday. And see you all later. Peace out. Thank you all for watching the video. Have a great day. It's your birthday. Happy birthday. Rate, comment, and subscribe. And see you all later.